Warning, the following video is raw and unscripted. Ranting and rambling may occur. Viewer discretion is advised. Don't let the ghosts and the ghouls disturb you. Hey, what's up guys? This is Josh from Nightmare on Woodsboro Lake. Uh, today we are doing a Nightmare on Woodsboro Lake front porch review. <laughs> and the main reason for that is that uh, my main like office space that I usually do my videos in is a complete shit show. And uh, I'd rather you guys not have to look at that the entire video. Um, but it is cold as shit out here. As you can see from my breath. <laughs> Uh, it was 9 degrees this morning. I mean, it's not the coldest it's been all winter, but it definitely was a unexpected chill. We got a bunch of snow yesterday, again. Um, but today, for our review, we are jumping into uh, Netflix's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where essentially we pick up 50 years after the events of the original. And the uh, plot for this movie was a group of influencers, uh, including two chefs, um, move or make their way out to Texas because they are trying to revitalize the ghost town husk of Harlow, Texas, um, and kind of just get a fresh start. Now, was this the greatest plot idea? No. But if you look at all the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, they all seem to find like follow a similar plot line, and they just change some variations in it to make it not seem completely the same. Um, whether that's being a long lost family member inheriting, you know, the the house that uh, Leatherface resides in, or kids breaking down out in the middle of Texas and ending up at that house. So the fact that they took a step with this Netflix film and kind of went in a different route, you got to give props to them. I mean, was it a perfect plot? Obviously not. But they took a step outside the box and decided to, to change that, you know? So I definitely give them, you know, credit where credit is due, and it's definitely due there for trying to be original, to a, to an extent. Um, so, also with, with the whole, like, influencers trying to um, revitalize the town of Harlow, um, I understood the plot. Um, you know, they wanted to reinvent the sense of small town life. Um with a more current theme, you know, of, like, like-minded individuals wanting to start fresh, you know, somewhere where they feel safe, um, where there's this, this level of equality and sense of, like, value, um, you know, in the current state of the world of affairs that we're in, you know, with, like, Black Lives Matter and, um, LGBTQT, I, you know, for people who like other, you know, um, sorry, <laughs> I just didn't know, I can't remember the acronym exactly, but, you know, love who you want to love, essentially, but in that kind of world right now where there's so much hate and animosity, these people want a fresh start where they can kind of escape from that and create their own community of people who feel the same way that they do. So I, I understand where they're coming from with that plot. Once again, I say it wasn't perfect, but I see why they did it. Um, so just some good points for this movie. The cinema, uh, sorry, it's so cold. <laughs> I'm like shaking <laughs> and, and obviously I'm, I'm messing up my, my video here <laughs> with some of the, the stuff I'm saying, but 
uh, the cinematography was fantastic. Um, there was this whole key scene where we get the most grotesque, gory event. Um, and the, the, just the scenes leading up to that were fantastic. You know, it's a downpour. Uh, you have, you have Leatherface kind of like in this alleyway and there's just like this awesome like shot of him like watching the bus go by i know they used it in the uh like a lot of the the trailer stuff and some of the poster work that they did um but i just thought it, the whole scene was fantastic you know he gets on the bus <laughs> with um all these people that have like come out there for this, you know, grand, like, envisioning and, um, kind of just like this, the speech that this, these influences are giving to try to interest people into coming and setting up shop in this town. You know, it's kind of like, it's, it's like a town hall meeting before that's their town. <laughs> um, but, so they're all on the bus uh, because uh, one of the influencers, we find out, he gets just his fucking jaw hacked up at uh, the house where Leatherface has been staying. Um, but just that whole scene where Leatherface gets on the bus, there's like this blue light from the bus. And it's just, it sets such a creepy atmosphere for like him to come in there and just start like, ripping through these people, like, cutting them in half with his chainsaw. He, like, slams a dude through the roof with his chainsaw. And, like, just, like, the cut scenes and all the angles they were using with this, like, blue light atmosphere was just so, for lack of a better term, sick. <laughs> that scene, I mean, alone, if you're just looking for a fun, kind of, like, gory movie... It delivered in that uh, department, for sure. Um, but that whole scene was just so awesome, and it was shot so well. Like, man, I just can't get over it. That was, like, my favorite scene in any Texas Chainsaw movie, for sure. Um, super brutal, super grotesque. I know they used a little bit of CGI effect for some of the gore, and you can kind of tell that, oh... Oh, God! <laughs> Live on Nightmare on Woodsboro Lake! Got a runny-ass nose because it's so freaking cold. Um, but, I mean, despite the CGI, if you're not really paying attention and you're just enveloped in that that horrific scene, it's a, awesome. Like, I didn't really care that there was use of some CGI. I know some people get nitpicky and, um, you know, I love practical effects, don't get me wrong, but... I feel like they did a pretty decent job of the CGI on this one. It wasn't, like, too over the top. Um, but, yeah, very captivating scene. I think anyone else who has seen the movie will agree with me. Most most people will agree that that was a freaking wicked scene. Um, so, kind of starting over, like... I know I kind of jumped into that because I just wanted to touch on the note that the cinematography was fantastic throughout this film. Um, very well shot. But, so the influencers moved into this town. You know, it's supposed to be a ghost town. Well, you find out Leatherface's mom is living right there in town and has not vacated the premises like she was told to do. Because, uh, you know, they had bought up this whole town pretty much and had all these deeds for the, for the, for the buildings. And so, you know, they're, they're forcing her to leave the premises, and she ends up dying. <laughs> we'll just shorten that, make it short and sweet. She dies um, on her way being transported by the police, and one of the influencers decides, you know, this is our fault. We forced her out of her home, and this is the reason why she... Um, is, you know, well, before she died, she died in the truck with them, but, um, you know, she had, like, puked up stuff and was just worse for wear. So, Leatherface, without his mask, um, 
gets into the vehicle with the police in the back, and then the influencer rides up front with the other officer. She dies, and this just sets Leatherface off, um, you know, because it had been so long since he had been active, I guess. You know, he, he probably picked off people, like, here and there, like, I don't know if the continuity of the other films fall into line with this one, just or if it's just from the original to this one, but I'm sure he's killed in between. But he's done it very discreetly, because obviously he was able to hide out in plain sight in this town because he wasn't wearing a mask or wearing someone's face. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're transporting her. She dies on the truck, and... That just sets him off, and that's where Leatherface comes back into sw full swing. He uh, he makes them wreck the truck, he kills the officer, both of them. He ends up going out in the sunflower field and just takes this dude's face off and puts it on, and that's when we get good old classic Leatherface, a much older, and might I say distinguished, <laughs> Leatherface. And, you know, I understand that people had a lot of quarrels with the way he looked. I mean, there's no perfect way for Leatherface to look. He is taking other people's fucking faces and putting them on his own. So you're not going to get a winner every time. I mean, especially in that moment. He didn't have time to go sit out there and fucking do arts and crafts and stitch together the perfect fucking face. So he worked with what he had. <laughs> so I don't have much beef with that. You know, he was still this beefy, burly dude, kicking ass, taking names, and just fucking shit up. So, um, yeah, so it goes through that. He ends up killing the influencer girl, who you find out is with the, the main influencer chef gentleman. Um, but, yeah, so she gets killed, and... We find out that one of the sisters of the other chef, the, the girl chef, um, had survived this mass shooting at her school. She had been shot and wounded as well, but she played dead. And has this whole level of survivor's guilt. Um, and, and in fact, there's a sequence where she like flips her shit when she like is holding this last dude that's hanging out there, he's kind of been, like, helping getting the town set for this event that they're doing where they're going to, like, you know, introduce their plans for the city. Um, but she has his gun in her hands, and she just, like, has, like, this flashback and this moment and freaks out. But then from there on, we get into full swing with just, like, boom, you know, the... They find out, like, oh my god, I don't have the deed to that lady's house. They had kicked her out. She, in fact, had the deed. So, I don't know if that dude was just up to some felonious shit and claimed he had the deed, but but uh, Leatherface, uh, his mom, had the deed. And he ends up getting his fucking jaw hacked open, and he's, like, outside trying to fucking squabble his way through town with his fucking... Just, mouth fucking hanging open like ripped off mostly and he ends up dying you know because obviously there'd be a lot of blood loss and just i don't think anybody at that time unless you were like holding it up and trying to like apply pressure or trying to do something to wrap it up and keep it in like you're not gonna make it very far so he dies out in the street and that prompts everybody to go on the bus and then we get that fucking fantastic massacre scene like that scene put the massacre and texas chainsaw massacre because that was like a lot of fucking people just getting fucking gutted and gored um so we get that fantastic scene and they end up reaching out to you find out sally hardesty survivor from the first film has been waiting for this moment to face off with leatherface once again uh, for taking all her friends away from her. So, and she's like some kind of ranger. So she makes her way into the town of Harlow. For this face-off with Leatherface. 
So essentially, <laughs> we get this uh, requel vibe, kind of like the new Scream, which, you know, I totally like the requel vibes, but I feel like <laughs> I've seen all these memes where they're like, you know, like, copy the homework, but don't make it look exactly like the homework, you know, just so they don't they don't know you copied. And it, it's just this whole Laurie Strode kind of Halloween vibe you get. Because, you know, coming back, they skip all the other films and jump right in from, like, the first film to the new film. And um, so she's there to face off with Leatherface. It's very short-lived, if, if we're going to be honest, in my opinion. Um, she gets a fucking chainsaw through her, like, chest and stomach. And somehow she survives that point and, you know, shoots at him a couple of times. And she warns, like, the survivor of the, the shooting. She's like, you know, don't run. Um, he'll never stop haunting you. And, you know, that's obvious because, like, she obviously held on to that her whole life. She had the picture of her friends in the van. Um before you know the events of texas chainsaw massacre like on their way she had like that memory and she has just been stewing over leatherface for 50 years and i know they weren't able to get the original character who played sally hardesty um due to her passing away so they got a another gal to pl take her place you know so it isn't exactly like how jamie lee curtis could come back and play Laurie Strode, so much older. Um, but I think they did a pretty decent job at picking someone who looked like they could be Sally Hardesty um, in her later years. So that, that, I mean, good selection on that part. And, you know, a good selection on, I think the characters, like, we didn't have enough time to, like, kind of bond with any of them. Like, I did feel a little bit of something for that girl who survived the school shooting. And that was the point. I mean, not like this deep connection, because the movie's an hour and like 20-something minutes long. But I felt just this, like, sadness for her. Um, but they end up facing off with um, Leatherface, um, because Sally ends up getting just killed within, like, so many odd minutes of facing off with Leatherface. It wasn't very, like... I don't know, it felt very lackluster. It felt very like, okay, let's throw this legacy character in there just to get fucking killed off in the first, like, 15 minutes of screen time with them, you know? Um, but it gives our chance for our new characters to show some, like, character growth in that short amount of time that we get. And they think that they killed Leatherface. Shocker. Like, anyone who knows... You don't just fucking kill <laughs> these these iconic horror characters. It just doesn't work that way. It, you know, you, you think everyone's all safe and good, and that's not the case. Um, so, you know, the sisters think they're going to, like, make their way, and they're like, okay, we're out of here. You know, they thought they defeated um, Leatherface because, you know, she hurt him with his own chainsaw and then, like, kicked him into, like, this deep, like, watery sinkhole and so they get into their self-driving car and put in the coordinates and it starts drop it's about to take off and leatherface fucking gets the sister the the influencer the chef girl and pulls her out the fucking window if i remember correctly and you know is like attacking her and the other girl is like helplessly watching as she's being driven away because the self-driving car has set its course and it's going. And then you just see fucking uh, Leatherface decapitate the sister and fucking hold up her head like a goddamn trophy. As she's like left screaming and crying and the car's driving off with her like, shit, I mean, she made it, but look at that. She already had a bad case of survivor's guilt and now she's got it like times two. <laughs> Especially because now she doesn't have her sister. I don't know if... I can't remember if they mentioned if their parents have died or, you know... Like, what what is up with that? You know, I've only seen the movie once, but... You just got, like... That might have been the only person left in her life is her sister. And now she doesn't have anyone. 
and all her friends are dead from the mass like the mass shooting. So she's left driving off screaming and crying as Leatherface has his prize. And then later on you find out there's like a bonus scene of uh, Leatherface making his way back to the iconic Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. And that is pretty fucking awesome. That's a great Easter egg. Um, and obviously I feel like they're going to take this another step and I don't think it's going to be a one and done. I feel like Texas Chainsaw Massacre is going to get a few more sequels from this Netflix film but overall if i was to score this um bad boy i'd definitely give it like a 7.5 like i said plot had its errors and its its holes and it's just i mean it wasn't the greatest plot in the world but it definitely was them trying to be original and i can appreciate that um so i definitely give it a 7 out 7.5 out of 10 the gores were fantastic, or like the gore and the, the kills were fantastic. Um, the cinematography was f phenomenal. Um, the person who played Leatherface did such a great job playing Leatherface. Um, he just felt like such a brutal form. Um, he seemed a lot smarter than the Toby Hooper um, original version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, cause, you know, Leatherface is supposed to be kind of this slow, um, sort of childish killer. This one, he seemed very methodical and very smart, and you never know, that might have come with age, like, he might have gotten a little bit smarter and, um, developed, who knows? But it, it kind of felt out of place. I mean, I'm not going to be one to nitpick. Because it was a great, like, jump scare gore fest, for sure. Um, but like I said, it was very short with not much character development. Um, it was just a quick, like, slasher film. And that's, that's always great, you know. Sometimes that's what you just want. You want to curl up with some snacks and just watch a horror flick. You don't need all these levels to it, but now I'm starting to rant. <laughs> Shit. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I enjoyed it. It was definitely a fun little watch. Will I watch it again? Yeah. Like I said, sometimes you just need these little, these little horror flicks that you don't really need to think about. It's just about the jump scares and about the, the kills and just about seeing these iconic characters on screen again. So, if you haven't seen it, I really don't know why the fuck you're watching my video right now. Uh, but if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It, and I know there's people that don't want to even touch it, but, like, it's a fun little watch. So, just enjoy it for what it is. If you go into it with an open mind and enjoy it for what it is, then I think you'll have a fun time. So, yeah, that's... Mainly my quick review. Usually my reviews take about an hour, and this has only been a little over 20 minutes. So I really had to sum it up and just throw a bunch of shit at the wall, see where it sticks. Um, but thank you for tuning in, as always. Um, you know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys later.